What's up subscribers and subscribers to be? Welcome back to the channel, my name is Mike. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about ways to invest income tax money. The reason that I'm doing this video is um, I know this and I've been one of those people, time after time, year after year, you get income tax money, but then six months to that next year, you're waiting for the next income tax season because you're wanting that check again. And when I realized when I was in college, back around income tax time, and around the same time that um, school checks came out, I realized ways to invest the um, refund checks so I can actually make more money and actually sustain myself longer. And I want to show you guys some of those ways today. I know it's cliche, but the first way that I'm going to talk about is paying off debt. I know a lot of people say it, I know you hear it often, but um, what I have to say is a little bit different. I don't think you should just generally pay off debt when you get your income tax check. Um, in my opinion, it's not the smartest thing to do. I think there's a specific type of debt that you should pay off. When you're looking at the types of debt you should pay off, I think you should number one, pay off any type of debt that you owe that's a previous due balance. You will have fees associated and that will affect your credit. So definitely pay off any previous dues balance if you can first. The second type of debt that I think you should pay off is high interest debt. Um, debt such as credit card debt, um, if you owe on a car loan or anything like that. The reason being is because this debt is high interest. Not only are you paying back the value that you borrow, you're also paying a lot for the fees associated with borrowing that money, which is your interest fees. The reason that I'm not saying that you should pay off all debt is because sometimes you can have debt that has lower interest fees. If you are to keep that debt there and continuously pay it off, you can number one, build credit, and you can also use that money for other investment options that could yield you a higher interest that you're paying on that debt. Therefore, you'll be making more money. And I'll explain that later in the video. The next thing that I would recommend is investing in stocks, mutual funds, and things of that nature. The reason being is these are tools of investment that can yield a pretty good return, but don't necessarily require that much to get started. Um, I personally, of these options, I like stocks. I like to pick individual stocks. If you're new to stocks and you want to pick individual stocks like me, you can definitely use the Robinhood app, but I definitely suggest that you start doing your research when it comes to stocks if you're picking individual stocks. If you want to find something that's a little bit more safe, you can definitely look into mutual funds, bonds, ETFs, etc. A lot of times you won't make as much money. There'll be a more stable return. Like I said, they're a little bit more safe. They're a little bit more less risky. So those are just some of the trade-offs trade when you're looking at you know, stocks over mutual funds and ETFs. The third thing that I would suggest is to start a business. Starting a business takes a lot of work. If you have anywhere between $500 to $1,000, you can definitely start up a business. You could even start with less than that, depending on what you're trying to do. As a matter of fact, if you're trying to do something such as a YouTube blog, you can start a business anywhere between like maybe a $150 to $200. And that's once you're trying to do the actual paperwork and everything. I'll probably do a video showing you guys how to start a business probably within the next few weeks. I know when I did mine, I had to pay like maybe $125 to the local city maybe another 150 when I was getting everything done online and another hundred dollars to get my website started up. After that, the only thing that I needed was products. Depending on what you're trying to do, that can be really cheap to get started. The final thing that I would suggest doing with your income tax money is buying land or other tangible assets. When I say tangible assets, I'm referring to assets that you can touch. Typically uh, for me, that's going to be precious metals. The reason being because you can buy these things and they'll typically increase in value over time. If you're looking at something such as land or real estate, you definitely have that cash flow aspect that can make you money. A lot of people don't know it, especially in the area that I'm from. You can buy a decent sized home um, with only putting a few thousand dollars down. Sometimes you don't have to put anything down depending on the situation that you're in, especially if you have good credit. Gold is going to be more of a long-term store of value. If you want to store some of your money, if you want to beat um, the bank's rate or whatever, or you want to hand out something to your kids in the future, or just save something for a later um, a date that's um, far into the future, you can definitely store your money in uh, precious metals and um, tangible assets. Some other investments include around tax time are flipping cars. Around this time of year, January, February, March, it's easy to purchase a car, wash it up, clean it out, and sell it for anywhere between five to eight hundred dollars more than what you purchased it for. You can start small business such as um, a pressure washing company, maybe like a gumball machine company or a snack machine company. A few years ago, I tried out drop shipping. I would basically take bunk bed ads from Walmart, put them on eBay, charge a premium of maybe two hundred dollars for the bunk bed, 
when someone purchased it from me on eBay, I would enter their information into Walmart's ordering account, basically have it shipped to them, and I would make a couple hundred dollars. And if you go online, you can find all kinds of um, things like ways to invest $100, ways to invest $500, or businesses that you can start with small amounts of money. Now that I've explained some of the ways that you can invest your income tax money, I wanna go over some of the ways that you definitely should not spend your income tax money. Um, if you go back and look at the list that we just went over, most of the items in that list were assets. Assets are for the most part things that make you money. When you get your tax money, make sure if you can, make sure you're buying assets, decreasing your debt and building credit. One thing that you should not do is purchase liabilities. When I'm talking about liabilities, I'm talking about things that do not make you money. Things such as um, overpriced cars or car notes, clothes that are going to be useless six months to a year from now, unnecessary vacations, going to clubs and concerts too often, and lastly, paying bills ahead of time and storing your money in the bank. The reason that you should not pay your bills ahead of time is because if you pay your bills ahead of time, you're stopping yourself from having money set aside that you can be using to make money in that time span. If you have your money sitting in stocks or some investment pool over time, it's going to build up more money. But if you have it already paying a bill, it's not going to make you any money in that time. You could have actually made money in that time period, saved some of the extra, paid the bill and kept the rest versus just paying the bill way early. And who knows where you'll be? What if you end up moving or something and you no longer need that money towards that bill? You've basically just wasted your time or either some of your money. And the reason that I say that you shouldn't invest in banks is if you have your money in a savings account at your bank, at the most in a savings account, they're paying less than 1% interest. That means that your money is almost making no money every year. On top of that, the price of things increase due to inflation. So your money is actually decreasing in value if you have it in a savings account. Even if you have a CD currently, they're offering anywhere between one to 2% at most banks in interest for CDs, but inflation is typically in between two and 4%. So you're still losing money yearly. And if you have it in the CD, you're also gonna be penalized for taking it out. So I would definitely invest before I put it into a bank. Do keep in mind that you should have a certain amount set aside in, in a bank or something just for emergency purposes or to pay bills or something like that. But outside of that, there's no need of storing extra cash that you don't plan on using in the bank. So things to not buy, liabilities for the most part. Liabilities are things that do not make you money. Do not spend your income tax money on things that do not make you money. All right, and I wanna just wrap up the video giving you guys some tips to increase your income tax as well as to save more money throughout the year. My first tip is to place your money inside of stocks or businesses or any type of investment. The reason being is that money that's inside of stocks or businesses are gonna be taxed differently. Earned income, which is income from working, is taxed at the highest level. When you're looking at stocks or businesses, you're looking at capital gains tax and certain other taxes, which are at, for the most part, a lower rate. So you'll just save money off top in taxes. Also, when you're looking at stocks, your taxes are deferred if you hold your stocks for over one year. So let's say if I had some stocks for 50 years, I could defer my taxes until 2050 and I would pay taxes for only the year of 2050 if I was to sell during that year or whatever other year I was to decide to sell my stocks. And when you're looking at businesses, you're going to not only be taxed at a lower rate, you're going to receive a lot of tax deductions for being a business. In fact, if you have a business, especially if you have an LLC, uh, which only costs about maybe $150 to start, if you have an LLC and you operate from home, you can definitely include things such as your light bill and your rent and your taxes and you can get more money for those. Let's say for my LLC, if I was to go on vacation and if I was to actually do a video there and use that video on YouTube or for business purposes, I can also use that as a tax deduction. Not only the price for me filming or recording, but also the flight and some of the other services, meals and stuff, depending on whether or not I can prove they were used for business reasons. Tip number two, outside of the money that you're using for emergency or bills, do not place your money inside of banks. I said it earlier, um, if you have your money inside of banks, you're basically going to be losing value over the year due to inflation and the low interest rates that banks actually pay now. The only way I could just see myself storing a larger money in the bank is if I needed a loan for the bank and I wanted to have the money there to let them know that I could actually put it up as collateral or to finance something myself. 
And my last tip is to build credit and minimize debt. The reason that I say do this, of course, if you owe money, you're basically a slave to whoever you owe. You have to work to pay that debt off and you have to continue to work until that debt is paid off. So you definitely want to minimize your debt. But another good reason you want to do this is to build your credit. If your credit is high, you can do things with money that isn't necessarily yours. You can start borrowing other people's money or money from the bank and other places to do things such as buy homes, start businesses, etc. So you definitely want to build your credit. Let it be one of the things that you focus on as well, other than saving throughout the next year. With that being said, thank you for you guys' time. As you all know, I do invest in stocks heavily. If you're looking for a way to invest in the stock market, there's a link to the Robinhood app down in the description. If you use the Robinhood app, you can trade stocks without trading fees. It's an app that I've basically used for years, one of the platforms that I started with. And with that being said, thank you for you guys' time and have a great day. I'm about to bag, go get the money, count that cat and back to the money, put that on repeat. Go get the bag, go get the bag, and now we coming. If you really bought your money, put a dollar in the app. If you really bought your hustle, put a dollar in the app. You ain't taking else for nothing, put a dollar in the app. You ain't got no hustle muscle, get the fuck up out of hell.